that recently started up another new file in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it struck me as strange that I've never done a video on recreating a feature or gameplay element from this awesome game in Game Builder Garage, so I thought it was time we rectify that. And what better place to start with than the paraglider? This movement mechanic is integral to the open and explorative feeling of this game, and I thought it would be fun to try and recreate it, along with a small localized stamina indicator. So let's get started. We have our friend green person here, and he'd like to get onto the bullseye using his paraglider. We're going to start by detecting when the player is falling by using a speed sensor. Falling would be a negative Y value. And then we'll get a comparison node on that we'll use to compare to a constant. We can adjust this, but we'll start with a negative 2. So whenever the Y speed is less than negative 2, or in this case you're falling faster than a rate of negative 2 units, then we'll add a Y positive force to a moving box that we've attached to the player. We'll want to set that moving object to be centered with the player, and we've basically got the slow falling aspect of the paraglider done already. Now we're going to decide how to activate it. We'll have a button input set to X in this case, and we'll add a touch sensor. The touch sensor will attach to the person, and we can detect anything that would be the floor in our game, with a connection point of Y positive, Y negative, so that it's below the person. We'll have an AND node on, join the button input and the touch sensor together. Then we'll use a calculator to let that value either pass through or not pass through to the moving object, so that only when we're not touching the floor and we press the X button, then we will apply that upward force to the moving object. So we've got our button activated, slow falling, ready to go. Now the UI element that lets the player know what Link's stamina is in Breath of the Wild isn't some big bar on the top left or bottom right of the screen, it's actually a radial element that follows the player character. This kind of helps to not create a cluttered HUD unless you easily identify what your stamina is. We're going to try to recreate something like that, so a stamina indicator attached to our character. We're going to use an extending cylinder and a basic box object. The box object should be set to a connection point of Y negative, Y positive, and so should the extending box. We're going to give it a size of x.5, y.25, and z.5. Then we're going to have two teleport entrance objects. We don't want the stamina indicator to always be attached to the player, we only want it to show up when they're using the stamina or when it's recuperating. So we'll attach those to the box and then we'll add in our teleport exits. One should be attached to the player with a connection setting of y negative, y positive, and the teleport physics of reset. And the other should be in a hidden area, and it should just be set to reset. Now you can see that attaches our cylinder to the top of the player. You can adjust the sizes here to get it to go higher or lower, but I wanted to give it a distance where it would appear above the paraglider once we add it. Then we're going to add in a counter so that we can keep track of our stamina. In this case, I'm using a number of 180, and we're going to set it to a range of 0 to 180. We'll attach the anodon that identifies whether we're using the paraglider to the count down, and we'll attach touching the floor to the count up, so it restores when we're on the floor. Then we'll add a map with an input range of 0 to 180, in an output range of negative 0.25 to positive 0.25. We're matching that Y scale of the extending cylinder. We'll add a comparison node on to check whether our stamina is above zero. If it is, then we're capable of performing stamina consuming actions. Create a wormhole entrance to use it later. We make sure we can only paraglide when we have stamina, we'll add another anode on that takes that wormhole value. So when we hit play, you can see that when we press the paraglide button, we'll fall slowly and will consume the stamina, which will decrease the size of the extending cylinder, and it'll start to go back up when we've touched the floor. Now we need to work out when to decide to display the stamina bar. Now in Breath of the Wild, it displays whenever stamina is used, is being regained, and for a second or two after it achieves stasis. So we're going to add a second counter, 
and use a less than and greater than comparison so that it follows the original counter off by one or two frames. Then we'll use an equals comparison operator to see when the two stamina counters are equal to one another, the actual one and then the fake one at the bottom. Anytime the counter is greater than or less than, we want to adjust it so that the bottom counter is following the top one. But when they have equaled each other for a certain amount of time, in this case we use the number 45, so almost a full second, then we'll connect it to the teleport B to make it disappear from the screen. This way, the counter will display itself over a player character when there's a change to the stamina and for almost a second once they've reached equilibrium. That way the player knows that the stamina has recharged. That's the closest way that I found that we can emulate how it represents itself in Breath of the Wild. You'll always want to add effects and sound, like a cloth sound when the paraglider opens, and maybe use the ambient track on the BGM to add some strong winds. You can adjust the volume so it doesn't seem jarringly turned on when you open up the glider. Finally, you can take that output from the has stamina and is activating the paraglider and attach it to the person's action slot so it looks like he's performing an animation. And then we can add in a box for the glider with whatever dimensions work here and add in a texture. Now when we activate the paraglider, it will open up a visual representation over the character and it will start to decrease the stamina. Whenever you attach an object to the person, it's going to affect the physics, even if it's set to non-solid and non-visible. So adjust the size of the moving object and the force that goes into it accordingly. 